Hello, everyone. Hey, my name is Matt. I'm from Hungary. I work at a very special school called the Benedictine High School of Panahama, which is part of a UNESCO heritage site, a monastery. And I research experiential learning at the Corvinus University of Budapest. It's 5 p.m. in Beijing time, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Chinese LARP or Chupen Sha. Chupen Sha, Chupen means script or a transcript or some kind of report, and Sha means killing or murder. <laughs> so, that's the basic question. And as you will see, it's very similar to LARP, right? A small group of people playing for hours in an immersive environment. There are procedures. They usually tr try to solve a mystery, usually a murder. And there are two types of mechanics or interaction. Social deduction, who did it? And clue searching, how they did it. That's not new, but this is huge, I think. Uh, in 2016, there was a TV show which was quite famous in China about doing that. And all the applications were huge. As you can see, this Washi Me on the left side was the third most popular game app in iOS during the first wave of COVID-19. And this is the amazing stuff, I think. Just imagine that you can live from your hobby. Just check the numbers. Uh, of course, these are estimations, but it said that there are 2,000 people living from writing these scripts. Wow. Also, check this other survey. It says that only 15% of Chinese netizens has no experience with Tupen Sha. And 32% tried out the live version. What? This seems like huge numbers, right? I don't know. These are only, you know, the data from China. Uh, of course, what's going on? It's a booming industry, it's very innov innovative, and they try to internationalize their practice. And maybe they will compete with uh, traditional forms of leisure time. But there are concerns, concerns about violence and promoting paranormal behavior for minors. And you know, if the state media is, is saying that it's dangerous, then Maybe they will ban it in a few months. I'm not sure about that. Maybe you have heard about the, the controlling of uh, online gaming in China during the summer. So, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. So, what is Tupan Sha actually? I think you are quite familiar with the international influence board games, escape rooms, social deduction games like Werewolf or live action role playing. But I want to talk to you a bit about the Chinese background. There is a huge uh, tradition of gathering, eating together and doing some kind of stuff in China. And Hupen Sha can be that, like the like, uh, dine and crime, right? And Gong An stories is, are uh, um, genre in Chinese crime literature, which of course influenced Tupan Sha. Period dramas in TV are quite popular right now, and Hanfu fashion means that the youth in China right now is uh, is wearing traditional clothes or a tradition influenced clothes from the imperial periods. These are like uh, TV shows, you can see famous um, mangas about investigation. 
I heard that uh, Cluedo and Jurybox was one of the first board games which were imported into China. And around five or six years ago, the Chinese try started to do their own homemade uh, murder scripts. And the World War games were quite popular a few years ago. So it, so it has a background in escape rooms. But because I only have five minutes, uh, I want to talk about some possible frameworks, how to understand this phenomenon. Okay? We can use some theoretical frameworks like the experiments and Sikomane, which is quite famous, or transmodern tourism, or maybe gamification in tourism. But I want to talk about interesting stuff and not theoretical models. So you can understand it as HR enhanced tourism, right? You who have some experience with it, I guess. Also, you can understand Chupansha as some kind of interactive theater, right? Where there is some level of interactivity. Chupanshas are used as indoor corporate team building activities. I think be it's because in Asia, the notion or the phenomenon of, of having a face and hiding your emotions are very important and in this game, as one of the Chinese participants described, you get to know the real other, how they really behave. So you can take a look beyond the mask or the face. And of course, you know, nothing <laughs> blockbuster life. Just uh, uh, let's take a look on it and, and decide if you agree with me or not. I think bo both LARP and Chinese Chupansha is an amalgam of activities and they focus on the experience. And actually, not all Nordic LARPs are secrets and powers type, but the Chinese Chupansha is definitely focused on secrets and powers type of playing. What's I interesting to me is that China is so huge, the target aud audience is so huge that they could uh, be successful financial, financially in an international context, right? They, did, they do not try to invite uh, international players. They only do it for Chinese people right now. So is there anything which we could learn from it? How to make Blockbuster Lab successful financially or e even more successful, sustainable? I don't know. I bring you two, two metaphors for the success of Chu Pen Sha. One is Hazamkunstwerk. Maybe you are familiar with the term or not. It's called all encompassing art. Like Opera try to, try to mix all of the existing art forms back then, like painting, dancing, singing, theater, stuff like that. So maybe Chupan Sha can be understood as the, the all-encompassing Chinese type of play, role play. You know, you have elements from escape rooms, dressing up, uh, finding clues, doing social deduction, stuff like that. But for me, the, met the better metaphor is hot pot. Have you ever eaten a hot pot? It's a very good Chinese food. As you know, there is boiling water or soup and you just put raw stuff in it and it gets boiled and it's, I don't know why, but it's very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just throw a thing in it and, it's, and it still works. So maybe Chupan Sha is a hot pot of playful activities right now. So my research, I only did the media literature about the topic and I also read a few Chinese articles about statistical reports. I also ordered a uh, Chinese Chupansha from uh, AliExpress. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah. And it seems nice. What I'm fortunate to have 
every Chinese article published on the topic, which I haven't read because I need to sit down and, and you know, just read through Chinese uh, writing, which I can do, but I need time and energy for that. And I want to do uh, qualitative interviews about the topic with uh, designers and participants and stuff like that. Of course, it would be nice to have more games, more Chupin charts to, to analyze, because right now, we are only looking at the phenomenon from an outsider point of view. He should try to get the Chinese voice about that, right? So how they think about Chupin Sha. And right now I'm still looking for a theoretical framework, how to, how to understand it. Maybe LARP is a good uh, framework for that, but maybe not because it's still not well established in the academia, unfortunately. And of course I'm looking for international cooperation on the topic. This is totally not my main research topic, it's just a passion project for me, you know? So if you know someone, who can help me in the project, just please help me. Thank you very much for your attention. It was a pleasure to be here. And I still have two, two, two minutes for questions maybe. So if someone has a quick question, please say it now or say later. Oh, so many questions, okay. Oh, yeah, I haven't told you about that. Okay, do the people play characters? In most of the Chupenjas I am aware of, people have characters, fully fledged personalities, names, relationships, traits, backstory, how they relate to the case. You know, it's like when you buy a board game, it's like opening a box and then you have these short uh, books about the characters and they just, you know, read it. They, or they go to a bar and they can play it and they get the character sheets. Yeah, it's, most of the stuff, I think it's very complex. Of course, the online version or the mainstream version is much less uh, complex, yeah. Does, does that answer your question, Carl? Okay, thank you. Someone wa was also, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. So it's what, okay. I bought one and it's a small box, cards and uh, character sheets and some rules and that's all. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard about anything like that. What? Yeah, does the Chinese have anything like a Knutepunkt? I don't know. I'm, I'm aware of a convention in Shanghai, which was like before coronavirus, I think, and it was huge, but it was more like an expo for selling stuff, you know. Yeah, I think you can understand it as a, maybe a co more complex version of that. So is it also one of the players in the unit that's Yeah, sometimes, sometimes one of them committed it, yeah. Sometimes they don't even know that they committed it after the end when it's the, it is decided. But sometimes it's very uh, structured or it's more like a r railroad when all the all the clues are hidden in the room and they, and they are all targeting toward you. It's like that, okay. Thank you very much for your attention.